Good evening. I hope everything is good for you. This is a long day. Just before dinner. Are you hungry? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, <laughs> thanks. Now I got some pressure to finish my talks earlier so I can get out for dinner. I won't ask that question again. So, uh, my name is Frederick Harper. I'm a uh, Francophone. I'm coming from Montreal, from Canada, to talk about responsive web design. So, I'm a senior technical evangelist at Mozilla. I usually focus on everything that is around Firefox OS. So, mobile development, native application using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, name it HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. Uh, you can tweet during, uh, during my conference uh, by using my uh, handle, at Harper. And the only thing that you need to keep in mind for today's presentation also is out of comfort zone.net because I'm going to publish my uh, slides up there and uh, I will also publish a recording of that talk. So we'll see if the audio is good, but I will put this on my blog so you don't really have to take notes from things on the slide or even notes from what I said, uh, what I'm going to say today in that presentation. So, I think that it's not quite popular, but uh, there's still a link for uh, conference.io if you want to leave any feedback after the presentation, it's always useful. Uh, please leave constructive feedback, not just the guy didn't have any hairs. That won't help me to do my next presentation. And you know how is it, yeah, you understand me. And uh, I think you can also submit a question on the link. So we'll see after if I have some time to answer a question. If not, I'm going to be there uh, during the break. But you can also contact me on Twitter, emails, or whatever other ways that you want me to, uh, that you want to contact me. So how many of you were at my mobile first keynote yesterday? So you really want to see another presentation from me. Okay, it's okay. You have the choice. So I started my presentation a little bit in the same way. Uh, how we view the web uh, in the past, but also today most of the time, is that we're thinking most of the time about the desktop browser, the desktop view, the desktop hardware. And when we're building website, web application, most of the time we're only thinking about the desktop. And this is wrong. This is wrong today because we have so many other ways to access web application and websites. We can do this from mobile browsers, from the smartphone, from feature phones, from tablets, for touch tablet. Uh, we can do this also for any uh, form factors tablets. Think about the iPad. Think about the Surface from uh, Microsoft. Think about many Android devices. So there is many ways for us to access the web. We can even do this on television right now. Not even with the console, just the TV has internet browser in it, so this is quite a little bit crazy, I think. And I can do this with game consoles, and I can continue to talk about those things. There's also the Internet of Things, where I can go on the web on my refrigerator, so this is kind of crazy. I have access to the internet all over the place, so that means that as a user, I have access to your website and your web application from all these devices. So what's the problem? Let me show you some, some of the problem. So I will apologize first. I always hate to do those kind of anti-pattern because I don't want to hurt people. And when it comes to this example, if I TCs, I know the people, the people sorry, behind this uh, organization, behind those really good conferences, really great conferences we have in Canada, and I think they're doing this all over the world. I don't know if, it's, uh, if they're doing those in the US also. Really great conference, really great organizer, really great website when it comes to the desktop. So if I'm looking at that website, I still had a lot of information, really good website. Uh, I really like the color, I really like the design. As I said, great folks, great website. But what happened if I change the size of my browser? So there is one way to do this. If I want to test if my application may support many devices. So I'm not talking here about device detection, browser detection, user agenda detection. It's really about if my website is displayed on another platform, on another devices, on a new viewport. Will that website give me a great experience? And in that case, this is not quite there yet. Because I'm going to have to scroll 
down, scroll up, scroll down, scroll up, scroll to the left, to the right. I'm going to have to zoom in, zoom out. And you know what that means? In that case, I may be on my mobile um, phone and I was with a friend that talked to me about that conference. I said, oh my God, this is so awesome. I want to be there. I want to buy tickets. Maybe that's not going to be easy for me to buy any tickets for that conference. And I will forget about it. I will say, okay, I will buy those tickets when I'm going to be at the office or when I'm going to be back at home in front of my 27-inch screen. And I may forget about this. So you may lose a client. You may use a customer or an attendees for that conference. So in that case, great website, but not a great experience in many devices. And this is not the kind of experience we would like to have when it comes to websites. And that's a little bit what I was uh, talking yesterday about mobile first, is that we need to think about many devices. And in that case, they only thought about the desktop. Maybe this is good for them. Maybe this is good for the business because most of their attendees, most of the user will only use the desktop browser to access their site. But most of the time, you know it, I know it, this is not the case. So there is something that we call responsive web design. And there is that guy, Ethan Marcotte, really nice guy. I had the pleasure to uh, go out for dinner with him. Really brilliant guy. And uh, two years ago, I think, yeah, in 2012, uh, 2010, he wrote an article on Elizabeth the Park. If you were there yesterday, you heard that I uh, praised those apart stuff, Elizabeth the Park, book apart. And he wrote an article about why we should create those websites that would respond to different viewport instead of doing those fix with size website. So I write a good article, like I said, two, three years ago uh, about responsive web design. So what is it? It's really to think about the user's needs before her needs. Maybe my need as, a, as your customers would have to uh, have a website that will work well on a desktop and maybe on a Blackberry because those are the two devices that I'm using. But maybe you're using an iPhone, maybe you're using an Android, maybe you are using a Samsung, uh, I think this is the one note that is kind of bigger, not quite a tablet, not quite a smartphone. Maybe you're using a new device that I didn't even know about it, but I'm not thinking about you. So when I'm doing responsive design, when I'm taking that philosophy, I'm gonna think about user's need before. I'm gonna create a website that will adapt to var various device capabilities instead of configuration. And this is really important. Instead of saying, oh, I'm gonna detect if he's using Safari or if it's an iPhone, and I'm gonna adapt my website to the iPhone, I'm gonna adapt my website to the resolution of the iPhone, to the viewport, to the places that I have on the screen to display my uh, website or my web application. And by doing this, that's gonna help me to future-proof my sites. What happens if tomorrow nobody uses iPhones anymore? Soon we're gonna be able to buy those in Walmart. I'm pretty sure that the hit around iPhones will go down a little bit because everybody will be able to get one. So what happens if tomorrow iPhones or Androids are not the most used platform? What happens if there is a new phone that go out and I'm not supporting this on my side? So by thinking about responsive website, I'm gonna be able to create those experiences that's gonna be future proof. So let me show you a couple of examples. I really like that one. Maybe because there's just like a cat, a lot of like animals fighting with themselves. So this is a real nice website. Now they are friends. No relation with the presentation. I just like to do these. So uh, what's happening there is I'm going to use another tool. Uh, if you're using Firefox, there's a responsive design tool here. So I don't have to move myself the browser. I have preset resolution. So in my case, if I go with a kind of larger resolution, you see the website. It's there. It's working well. What they do is that usually uh, slowly they will remove some element of the screen. And you will still have a good experience. You will still have the experience that you had on the desktop, but in that case, I may be on a tablet. So they had a, flexi uh, a flexible grid, so they move everything around. But if I go smaller and smaller, you're gonna see that some stuff just been removed. You don't see anymore the title of the magazine. You still have the, 
you still have those animals fighting themselves. But I still have a great experience. I still have that cool CSS effect that they're doing with the images and with the text, and it's working quite well. That great. I always need to talk about that website because I really think that it's a sample website that gives great information about a product. Most of the time, we are not creating website with cats and dogs fighting uh, on the front page. So you may have more chance to uh, create something for a beverage like this. So still my good website, highly uh, Isimo, uh, with this uh, lovely ladies that are drinking the coffee uh, drinks and I have all the information about the beverage. And if I change the resolution of that screen, of that website, you will see that I still have a great experience. And what they did is that they just moved around different components on the site to adapt their website to the viewport. So in that case, they're not able to detect, oh, Fred is working on his, I don't know, Firefox OS device, or his iPhone, or his Android, or his uh, Windows phone. No, because I'm on Firefox, I'm on my desktop. The thing that I changed is the viewport of my website, and I still have a great experience. So the thing they did, this site is really responsive because they didn't care about the kind of device. They just care about the, the portion of the screen that I have, the width and the height that has a developer I can use to display information to the user. I also have, uh, I also found this website two, three days ago. A uh, really good website, I really like it because this is a little more serious than like coffee uh, stuff or uh, animals fighting with themselves. This is about a children's museum in Pittsburgh. Really nice UI, seriously, I really like it. This is kind of clean and simple, but I have all the information I want. I have this kind of slider at the top, some images, I have the menu at the top. And let's try it by just moving the browser. Oh. So let's start again. I have my website and look at the menu at the top. So I have maybe, oh, I have maybe 10 things. At some point they said, okay, you don't have enough space anymore. Let's not like give you 10,000 of menu items because you don't need them anymore. Let's prioritize the items that we want, but it will still give you access to the important information if you need those. So I have a more item that just appear and at some point it disappears when my screen is bigger. And what's going to happen is that at some point I'm going to lose the slider. At some point I'm going to lose the slider. Now I lose my mouse. Oh. And I lost the slider because maybe that's not, not ma that does not make sense on my smartphone. And you saw the change at the top. They're, they're changed completely. So I remove all the menu items, put this little menu items that is really useful. The menu went at the bottom, so you, saw, you see what I did? The menu is there, so this is only a link that will send me to the bottom of the screen. And when you look at the top, what I did now is that, okay, there is a lot of chance that the guy going to my website on a smaller device may be trying to go to the museum. So maybe I need to call uh, the place to check if they have my reservation. Or how can I find the museum? How can I go to the museum? So they really did a great experience to modify the website. And actually, when I say modify the website, this is not the basic stuff when we talk about responsive web design. You don't have to modify your experience. You just have to adapt to the screen. But in many cases, what you're going to see is that, yeah, maybe even if I move some columns, even if I move some stuff in my website to adapt it to a smaller device, to a smaller viewport, maybe that will make more sense to change a little bit those things. So this is an opportunity that you're going to have when you're going to build your website by thinking about responsive web design. Does that make sense? You can say no. So now we know a little bit what is responsive web design. We saw not so good example. We saw a better example of what can be achieved when we're building your site responsive. But what makes a site responsive? So basically, you need four things. You need a flexible grid layout. You need a flexible image and media. I will come back on those uh, just after. You need media queries. Probably one of the best feature of CSS, in my own opinion, I really like, uh, from CSS3, I really like CSS3 media queries. And you're gonna need something else. 
I'm going to talk about that something else later. So first, I need a flexible grid-based layout. So what's the problem? I so I shown you non-responsive sites are not really fun. I don't really have a good experience when I'm, I'm on my mobile phone or even on my tablet. And I don't have a site that is quite uh, working well on the device that I'm using right now. Most of the time, because those sites are no phone, it's because they're fixed width. So they use fixed width maybe over the place, maybe on some specific element on the website, but that's, that does not give me a great experience. Really not a great experience. What happened also is that most of the design tools that we use, they tend to use pixels. So what are we going to have to do at some point usually to turn those pixels to their EM counterpart? And there's also a problem. I forgot about this one, but sometimes the pixels don't, does not equal the pixels anymore, depending on the screen, depending on the resolution, depending on many, many capabilities of the device. That may give you some trouble when you came to when you're gonna go to uh, add your design to the website. So what are we gonna do for the next 30 minutes is to learn that formula. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, it's not true. That's gonna be this one. I told you yesterday for those that were there. I'm not really a math person, so that's gonna be an easier one. The formula to change from pixel to EM counterpart. Is really simple. So we're going to take the target, divide this by the context, and that's going to give us a result. Kind of abstract. Let's let's check what is it. So I have this responsive web design H1 with link inside. Uh, read more that I can click to get more information about responsive web design. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to take my H1. In my website, my H1 was 24 pixels. So I put the font size at 24 pixels. So this is my target. This is what I'm targeting. I want that font size to be 24 pixels. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take 24, and I'm going to divide this one by 16. And this is the context. And this one is quite tricky. Because my H1 is not really in, in, in another container, my H1 is in my body. So my context is really the size of the H1, the default size in the browser. So this one is a little bit more tricky because the default, the default size, font size for H1 in the browser, most of the browser is 60. So I'm gonna do 24 divided by 16, and that's gonna give me 1.5 EM. So what I'm gonna do in my code, I'm gonna remove the 24 pixels, and I'm gonna put the 1.5 EM. Let's check another that will make maybe a little more sense. So now I have my link inside my H1. My link font size is 11 pixels. I want this link to be smaller than uh, the H1. So my target is 11 pixels. My context this time is the H1. And the, the, uh, the target of my H1 was 24. So this is my context for my link in my H1. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide 11 by 24. That's going to give me that crazy long number. 0 0.4583333333 and I can continue for a long time. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to paste that long number. So there is no plus sign. This is just for the presentation to show you that there is many more three or many more numbers after that number. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste that long number. Just paste it in my CSS code. That may give me 20, 30 numbers after the point. I don't care. What? you will probably want to do is to try to round that number and say, no, I'm not going to paste this, all that number. I'm going to paste 0 0.4583. That's going to be enough. That may be enough, but you don't have to care. The browser will manage this for you. So just paste the long number, and you're going to have something real more precise. If we go with the grid, so I have my blog. I have a blog. Uh, I have my page. I have the blog part. I have the main content. And I may have a sidebar that I name Hutter. So if you look at the code, the code at the left, this is really my page before I thought about responsive. So I have a margin of 26 pixels. I have a width of 960 pixels. I don't know for you. I cannot stand 960 pixels anymore. You're going to see this in many designs and many websites. We use now to create websites for uh, 
1024 pixels width and most of the time we put 960 because this is kind of the comfort, comfort zone uh, for the width of the site. So in my case, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say, okay, 90% will probably make sense. It's kind of 90% of the width, my 960 to uh, my 1024. So this one is a little bit arbitrary. So I really decide that 90% for my main content will make sense. So that's gonna give me a 5% margin on the two side. The more important part is only the three other things. If I go on my next div, my blog div, I have a width of 900 pixels. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my target, 900 pixels, I'm gonna divide this by the context. And my blog element is inside my page element. So I'm gonna do 900 divided by 960. And that's gonna give me a percentage for the width of my div. In that case, I'm gonna write 93.75%. That's going to give me my result, my responsive result, because that's going to be percentage instead of being a fixed width. So in that case, if I change the size of the browser, it's in percentage. So I don't care. The browser will manage the size of my div for me. And look what I put right uh, at the right on my code. I put a little comment, and I say, hey, this is the target that I use, and this is the context that I use. And this little trick is really important. Because this is new now, I remember that it was 916. But what happened if I go in my code two, in my code two, three days, one month, two months, three months after, or if one of my colleagues have to modify something? Oh, by the way, Fred, the blog uh, element is not that large. We will need to uh, update this and add maybe something like 100 pixels. I cannot remember. So by putting my target and context and comment. That will be easier for me or for any other people to modify my code after. If I check the main element, so as you see, the main element is inside the blog element. So I will do the same thing. My target was 566 pixels. So I'm going to take my context, uh, my target, 566 pixels, divide this by the context, that is my blog element, 900 pixels. And that's going to give me 62.8888888 something uh, percent. There is no plus, again, this is just for uh, the slides. So what I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna paste the long number. I don't care, the browser will manage this. And that will be fast. So that won't change nothing. If you run the number, you will just lose precision in uh, your percentage. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing with the other div. 331 divided by 900 because my other is still in my blog element. That's gonna give me a percentage. I will put this in my code and ta-da! I have my flexed grid. So what happens after is that if I move, if I change the size of the screen, and of course the goal is not to be able to browse your, to browse your website with a smaller browser, it's really to be able to have a good website, a good view of your website on different viewport. That's gonna give me a better experience. Of course, that's not all. I need to have flexible image and media. And there is one really, really complex solution. I only need to put the max width to 100 percent. What's going to happen is that that's going to work also with the video element and any media element. Is that by setting the max width to 100 percent, the browser don't care about the size of the image that you put inside of the container. The image won't go uh, bigger, won't be bigger than its own container. So. Of course, this is not the best solution because what's going to happen is that if I took a really good picture of the crowd here with my DSLR, that's going to give me a high quality picture that's going to be really awesome. I'm going to put this on my blog and all the people on the desktop will have the big quality and if you go on your smartphone, you're going to see still good quality. That's going to be smaller, but that's going to be perfect. You're still going to have a good experience. The only problem is that if my image is 10 megabyte, Everybody will have to download 10 megabytes. Even the people on the smartphone that will have this little picture, actually they will, they will have the full quality picture just for size in the browser. So this is not perfect, but for now, this is the only HTML only way. Does that make sense? This is the only way that you can do this in HTML. So this is the little thing with responsive design that are not quite there yet. It's working, it's just not giving the best experience to user. If you want to use something else, there is other framework, there is other JavaScript libraries that you can use that will help you. There is a filament group. 
They created a JavaScript library that used cookies and JavaScript to kind of emulate responsive image. So what you're going to do, you're going to have the JavaScript code. You're going to, in the code, you're going to give two, three versions of the images, and the script will take care about the size of the screen. So that may reload the page, that will uh, work with cookies if there's no JavaScript available. You're going to be in trouble, that won't going to work. But this is a good solution if you want to provide different size of images to people. So you won't have to provide the full old quality that will just resize. But responsive web design is kind of new. Even if it's been three years now, when it comes to that philosophy that we are thinking, this is still new. And there is the responsive image community groups, part of W3C that are working on the HTML standard. And they are working on two, three things. They are working on something called the picture element. So as far as I know, don't use this right now because there is no browser that understands that code yet. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think there is any browser that implement this yet. But what you're going to do, they're going to do a little bit like the video element. I'm going to have the picture element. I'm going to give many sources. And that's going to point to different size images. And I'm going to be able to, post, to put CSS streams and queries inside my uh, media element, my picture element, and my source. So if you look at the first one, I'm going to be able to provide big .gp, .jpeg if my minimum width is uh, 40 EM. And I'm even going to be able to play with the pixel, pixel ratio. So we know we have some problem with smartphone when they decide to uh, change the pixel ratio and their big ribs now display. So we're going to be able to manage those things because I'm going to be able to say, okay, sir, uh, big dot JPEG, if the pixel ratio is one, if the pixel ratio is two, sir, the big HD JPEG. And I'm going to be able to have another source. Oh, uh, sir, small JPEG and small HD. And in that case, I didn't put any media. But I'm going to be able also to have a fallback. So if no media query is working for what I'm trying to uh, show to the user, use the latest one. Use fallback.jpg. So a little bit like the video element where you're giving different uh, type of videos. And if it's not working, you can, in that case, fall back maybe in the flash element. So please don't put any flash element in this. But there is a way, like this is a fallback scenario that you have in this element. They're working also with the SRC set, kind of the same thing. So I won't go too further in the difference between the two, but those two elements may be at some point available in the uh, HTML5 uh, element. So that may be something that's going to be available. And as we know with HTML, CSS, uh, the vendors, so the browsers, they were pretty quickly to implement those things, even before uh, the standards got in the final revision. We're not quite there with HTML, and you can use HTML in all the browser because the vendors implement those things. So it's not there yet, but those are solutions that will be there soon to help you to put responsive image in your responsive website. There's a third element that you need to create a responsive website. And as I said, those are really kicking ass. I really like media queries. I really think that this, this is brilliant. Not so long ago, if we wanted to provide uh, different size of uh, the website, different size of web application, or different experience to different uh, devices like smartphone and desktop, I had to do a lot of work. I had to, do, to use JavaScript. I had to detect the user gen. Uh, I had to detect the viewport myself and do a lot of uh, manipulation and a lot of code that was not totally always optimal. Let's just say this. And we were able to define and to detect some media type between screen and print. So we were able to have different style sheet when it was displayed on the, the screen or when we wanted to print something. And most of the time, we were not really thinking about mobile devices. It was mostly about displaying the screen or print. So what I can do now with CSS through media queries, this is basically uh, a module that specifies method to enable web developer to scope a style sheet to a set of precise device capabilities. Capabilities. It's not about which devices. It's really about the capabilities of those devices. So for me, what I like is as a developer, it's like if I, it's a way for me to put if, to, to put some if statement in my CSS. 
So if I look at this, what this code is doing, this is a sample example, and it's really about, okay, if the media type is tree, so if someone is displaying my website, and the maximum width of the viewport is 600 pixels, change the font size of the body to 80%. So take the font size that we had before and put it to 80%. Pretty easy. And I'm gonna be able to do this in many other ways. I can say if my media type is three and the min width is three, uh, 20 pixels and the maximum width is 480 pixels. So between those two numbers, do this, do whatever you want. I can say if the media is not print and the maximum width is 600 pixels. So I can play with those things and make my own CSS3 media queries that will load in my website. I can either load the style sheet as I do before by importing my style sheet uh, and just having the media queries in my file. I can also do an import rule, import the URL uh, if this is the screen and the maximum width is 600 pixels, use mq.css. Same thing with the other one, I can put link and load that CSS only if the max width is 800. 800. But the thing that I can do is just in my CSS file, I don't have to use those things. I can just put that code in my CSS file. So I'm going to show you an example. Just before this, uh, there's some supported media properties that you can use in your media queries. Uh, you have access to all those. Most of the time, what you will really use is the orientation, the min max uh, within A. Those are the ones that you will use more often. So let me show you a quick example, little P Bakery. So this is an example that is coming from a CSS3 book. Uh, really nice example. This is a little bakery. Uh, nice website, menu to the left, information in the middle. To the right, I have that sidebar with some Twitter stuff and email newsletter and some link. And I have a footer and a header and a search box. So if I go back in my responsive to, I will be able to say that as any other websites that I've shown you, you're going to see some change at some, at some point. So I have the logo to the left, I have the menu to the top. At some point the menu, the menu will go down because I have less space. And you, you only see also the menu was at the left, now is at the top. If I go there you're going to see that I change a little bit the form of my information so it was in column after this you know, went in rows so really nice website kind of working well uh, it responds to different type uh, I can go and use maybe 320 but by 480 so I have my smartphone I can rotate the website because I'm rotating the rotation of my smartphone and I will still have a great experience in that case so as I said, you don't have to do those UI modification, but if you want to give a better experience to the user, that may be a good idea. So if I go check the code, if you ever go to check that uh, example again after the presentation, they put the CSS inside the HTML file. Don't do this. There was, th this was probably to uh, make it easier for the book or for the example. So I have my CSS that is in line in my HTML5. So I have the usual CSS that I will do. Uh, is the code big enough? No, probably not. Is it big enough? Because for, I don't know which reason, I'm not about to make the phone bigger. So I'm having some, I'm using some uh, Wolf font uh, with foam face, body element, and at some point if I scroll down enough, I'm gonna have, if I scroll down enough, yeah, I have a section called media queries. So as you know, CSS will be executed from top to bottom, and when you're gonna go to media queries, in that case, I'm gonna have all my media queries that are gonna help the browser to change my website when the viewport will change. So in that case, what she said, what she did was 
Okay, if the media type is screen and the minimum width is uh, 1,200 pixels, please change uh, the position for the nav main, uh, change the width, change the margin, uh, change the border, uh, the box shadow, and different element on my side. And she will do this for many element, uh, for many size. So now she said, okay, if the media type is screen, because this is what she's targeting, and the max width is 760 pixels. So there is maybe a lot of chance that that's going to be a tablet. So please adapt, please change the website. And at the end, the only thing you need to keep in mind when you're looking at that code are the line media screen and max width or min width or uh, those kind of uh, elements. Because the rest, there's nothing special. This is just CSS. And the thing that's going to happen there is that the browser will execute those CSS line when that's going to meet my kind of if statements in the CSS. So a really great example if you want to learn more about uh, CSS media queries and uh, you want to know how it's working. This is not a complex example. This is a small website with only a couple of pages, so quite easy to look at. And this is probably the kind of website that you're gonna do at some point or that you are doing. Every customer wants a menu, they want a sidebar, they want a footer, they want a header, they want a logo, they want information, different information. So that's gonna be a great example for you you to show, uh, not to show, but to learn how is it working with responsive web design. What happens if I have to support an old browser, old version of IE as an example? I can use CSS streamers queries.js. So this is a framework by Wouter van der Graaf. And this is pretty easy because you just need to take the JavaScript file, import a file, and it's working for you. The JavaScript file will just load, uh, parse your CSS and make it work where it makes sense. So this is a small file that you have to download. And you don't really have to understand the code, but what you're gonna do, you're gonna do the hard job for you. Of course, that's not gonna be a, a code that we usually suggest to you because gonna try to see if it's WebKit or Gecko or Opera. I don't think, this. I think this is an old file. Uh, an old version, it will check if it's IE and it will do different stuff with your CSS depending on what you're trying to achieve. So good file to use if you have to uh, support older version of browser that don't support CSS through the top queries. When you're taking your website and trying to change your website to adapt to different screen, there is some pattern. It's not just, oh, maybe that's gonna be beautiful to do this. Like, be creative, think about the user's need, think about your customers, what they would like to see on the different platform. But there are people on the web that created patterns for us. So they thought about how we can manage the different elements of the screen to give a great experience. So there is one pattern, the mostly fluid. So most of the time we'll see a website with a big header with a lot of information and kind of two columns, kind of a sidebar and a kind of big footer with maybe Flickr pictures or Twitter status. And what we're gonna do is that at some point, when the screen size will be uh, smaller and smaller and smaller, we'll just line up all the columns. We'll just uh, line up all my probably, probably div, probably maybe more semantic stuff, maybe that's gonna be article, we're gonna just uh, put them one other, uh, the other one. There's also the column drop. So if I have a website, as an example, with three columns, when the screen's gonna get smaller, I'm gonna remove the third column, put it on third, the two others, and I will continue to do that until I have only one column, but one on third, the other. There's also the layout shifter. So in that case, I have a big sidebar on the left, I have two main part in my website, so when the screen going to go smaller at some point, I will do the same thing. I will move all those columns one under the other. And that's going to be a great experience because I will still have all my information. And in that case, this is up to you to know which column should go where. Which information will be more important for my user in the smartphone? Remember the uh, Children Museum? They put the menu at the bottom because that will probably not the thing that was the most important. Maybe the information, the direct information on the front page was most important for their user. There's also the teeny tweak. You don't have to move everything. Actually, you don't have to move anything. You don't have to change anything that does not make sense. You can just use responsive image. You can just use a flexible grid and your website will add that. But let me tell you that at some point that may not give you a great experience. So what you can do is just 
do those t tweaks. So in Little P Bakery, they changed the menu from left to the top and at some point to the top under the logo. So those were not a big change, but they were good enough to give a better experience to the user. And you don't have to manage all those screen size also. Uh, there is the off canvas. I don't see, I, I didn't see that pattern quite often. But if you have a really good uh, big website and you have, as an example, three columns, and when the screen goes smaller, you just display one column and the people will have to scroll from left to right. You really need to have a certain type of website to uh, make these things work and really give a great experience, but this is another kind of pattern. So let me show you some resources that may be helpful if you're thinking that responsive web design is the way to go, the way for you to build websites, or if you want to know more about it and start to uh, create it when you're doing your design, when you're creating your website, when you're developing your web application and just doing the integration of the website. There's, of course, in Firefox, I show you the responsive design tool. I know I'm working for Mozilla. I really like the tools that we have in the browser, and many people don't know this. So give a chance. This is a great, great tool uh, that prevents you from always playing with the browser and changing every, every tabs that you have in your browser, so you're going to work only with one. There is the hardball CSS streams of queries. So this is a file you can download also. And this file is a kind, it's a baller play. So it's a starter kit, it's a starter CSS style, and they did the hard work for us. If you want to target specific devices and do specific experience on, uh, on different devices, so this is the file to work, the file to work with. You don't have to manage all major queries, but as an example, they already did for me the code for an iPad in landscape. If I want to support an iPad in Landscape and modify my website and add media queries, I don't have to search on the web the width and uh, the height of the file. They already did the job for me. So as I said, I don't have to manage all those uh, screen size if I don't need to. As an example, on my website, I need to modify a little bit my experience on the smartphone. But what I wanted to do is not to support all those uh, different platform or different smartphone or different devices. So what I said, I, I mainly did like three kind of breakpoints. Desktop or big screen, kind of tablet and smartphone. So of course, you may not have the best, ex best experience on any, all the platform, but you have, you're going to have a good enough experience and it didn't take me too much time to do all the code or to manage all the new devices. So for me, it, it was good enough, so I didn't have to use that thing. Uh, there is also the, oh, there is also the uh, 320 um, framework. So this is a little bit of uh, framework, like maybe you heard about Bootstrap, and there is like many, many, many frameworks that can help you to create a responsive website. So you don't have to do the code yourself. You can just use those, those frameworks. Bootstrap is one. Uh, the 320 and Hub is one. Uh, there's also the book Stunning CSS3. So this is not about responsive web design. Uh, this is just about, about CSS3. I think this, this book was released two or three years ago. It's kind of old when we think about technology, but still really relevant if you don't know CSS3 and you want to learn. So it's not just about media queries, but a really great book. I really suggest it. I talked to you about, about uh, the apart stuff. Again, a book apart. Uh, what is great with those books is that, and, and by the way, I don't get any money by talking about the upward stuff. I'm just uh, probably a fanboy of those stuff. So uh, this is a small series, a couple of books, maybe 10 books. They have a book on responsive web design. What is great is that this book is really simple, 100 pages, not anymore. You can have the uh, uh, ebook version or the physical version. And what is great is that it has been made by Ethan Marco, so the guy behind the philosophy of responsive web design. So it's not Fred, it's not like another guy that did that book. It's really the guy that taught about this principle, that taught about this way of creating website. So really good book. There's also the blog from Look, Look Wobleski. Uh, the guy behind mobile first. Uh, this guy is not just talking about mobile first. Uh, this is where I took all the patterns that I showed you in the presentation. He did a really good blog post about it. Uh, a lot of statistics around mobile. A lot of great articles around responsive web design and mobile first also. 
If you don't know Smashing Magazine, this is a really good blog for web designer, for web developer, for any pixels worker at the end. Uh, they have a blog post that they did two years ago, still really very relevant. Uh, I seem to live in the past when I'm <laughs> giving those resources, but this is a really good blog post. It's really, really too long. There is too many stuff in it. There is tools, graphics, resources, book, blog posts, a lot of information useful for you if you want to know more about responsive web design. That side, that side, media query reduct ES. I hate that site because this is too good. This is a kind of repository of many nice website that use media query. So basically they did responsive website. And there is many, many, many examples. So this is a curation of different website and they show you some screenshot. But the problem is that they have links so you can go watch all those website. And trust me, for people that didn't know about responsive web design, you're gonna start to do this with every website. You're going to start to scroll uh, to move your browser to see if those sites are responsive or not. So that's going to be a problem in your life. This is a problem in my life now. And what's great with that site is that if you need uh, some inspiration, if you want to know how people did the job when it comes to uh, creating a responsive website, uh, media queries, uh, media dot, uh, uh, media queries dot ES did a really great job. For people that want to sleep at night, there is also the uh, documentation for the W3C. This is not made for developer. This is really for the vendors, people that want to implement media queries. But still good if you want to uh, learn a little more the goals behind it, how it should be implemented, all the option, uh, everything that you can do with media queries. Uh, still a good thing to read, maybe at least once, I would say. So those are the list of great resources if you want to start uh, to think about responsive web design. I put all the links in the slide. As I said, I will put the slide on my website. So I told you there is a fourth thing. So we talk about flexible grid. We talk about responsive image. We talk about CSS streams of queries. But there is a fourth thing that will really help you in the process. What is that? I just wanted to uh, get some time to drink. So <laughs> this is about design. So you really need to think about your design. Uh, will I start by thinking mobile first? Because when you're doing responsive web design, you can start from which point you want, from the desktop view, from the tab, kind of tablet view, from the smartphone. So you need to ask yourself, does that make sense for me to start from the mobile first or not? Uh, is responsive web design a good solution for me? Maybe that's not the solution. Maybe there is another way to do what I want to achieve. And maybe this is not good for all websites. I'm thinking about line of business web application with really township of options and sometimes too many, but does that really make sense to make that site available on different uh, viewport on the smartphone, on the tablet? Maybe that does not make sense. Uh, do we need or want to do visual component for every devices? You saw in some of the website that I showed you, they change some stuff, they change the logo, they remove stuff, they add some stuff. So do I really need to do this? Or will I make something more simple like my website and I'm just managing two, three kind of view, sorry, viewport and that does the job for me because that's enough. This is just my blog. And one of the other things is that when you're creating your site responsive, when you're thinking about the mobile part of your site, don't think about mobile as, as just uh, as a usage because I'm mobile, because I'm moving somewhere. It's not just because I'm walking from point A to B, or it's just because I'm in the, uh, the, uh, the train going somewhere. I can be in front of my TV watching some good uh, TV show, and I'm just too lazy to go to my desktop. But I have my smartphone in my pocket, so I will try to use your web application or your website on my smartphone. Maybe I need all the information, or maybe I, I need to have a good experience or the same kind of experience that I had on the desktop version. And I told you with mobile first, I will tell you again with responsive web design, we are at the beginning. This is quite interesting now, that will be a little more interesting. I've shown you uh, the responsive images, the picture element, all those things. We're still working on those, we're at the beginning. So 
we're going to see more and more, more new stuff. So remember that link that nobody used, but please try. Do it. I made the effort to talk about it. So take my email, fharper at mozilla.com. If you have any web question around responsive web design, around mobile first, around Firefox OS, if you have an HTML application that you want to port to Firefox OS, this is really simple. Let me know, pay me, I'm there to help. Any HTML, CSS, JavaScript question, uh, I don't know everything, but I sure can help if you have any question. Uh, ping me on Twitter, FRPR. Uh, let me know if you're coming in Montreal. I will be more than happy if I'm in Montreal to go out for a drink, or go out for a dinner, or whatever, show you the great places in Montreal. If you want to see great technical blog posts, go on axe.mozilla.com. This is the blog from the technical people of Mozilla. So this is sometimes about Firefox, sometimes about Firefox OS. Most of the time, it's about open web, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, things around web, RTC, all the cool stuff technical blog post. So this is not uh, marketing blog post, this is really technical blog post. Last but not least, the only link that you have to remember, out of comfort zone.net. Uh, don't go there for the blog post. The blogger is not that good. But I'm going to post the presentation there uh, probably after the live presentation. Worst case, tomorrow the slide will be there. The recording, I hope that will be okay, will be there also. So I know it was right before dinner. I know some people take a good nap. <laughs> this guy is really sleeping still until the beginning, since the beginning. So at least it's not during my presentation that I fall asleep. So any question, comment, uh, insult? I can't take all, I'm a big guy. No? Thanks, 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 it was a pleasure.